It's a very interesting experience being a, an, an editor for, for a journal because you see things from the other perspective. So um, as, a, as an author, I submit my articles, but on being on the receiving end as an editor, you have to read everything. We get a whole spectrum of, of papers. Usually they're about how do I steer stem cells to become what I want. So we have the sort of stem cells we work with are cells that can become every, every cell in your body. But what you really want to know is how to get them to turn into brain cells or in heart cells, very specifically. So we get quite a lot of papers like that. We also get papers not only about, let's say, embryonic stem cells and this new kind of stem cell called an induced pluripotent stem cell. We also get um, papers on adult stem cells. So there's the cells in your body that every tissue that can repair has a stem cell population. And everybody would like to know how to repair tissue with those. So we get studies where they've transplanted them into perhaps animals with a damaged organ. Um, and to see whether the stem cells can repair that organ. So it's a fairly broad range of spectrum from everything from the basic properties of stem cells to ha towards how you can use them um, in animal models, but also clinically, so in every sort of level. We get a very variable quality, so our journal is fairly new, um, which means we don't always get top quality articles. We get some beautiful gems of articles sometimes submitted but we also get some very early stage articles and actually being on an editorial board is a very useful skill because it means you learn to distinguish poor articles from from good ones very well i think we reject about 60 percent of our articles um, because they're just not good enough so rejecting an article, we could do it at two levels. So an article will be submitted and the editorial board will look at an article and decide, the editor-in-chief looks at it first and then decides whether it can be sent out to the other editors. Um, it's usually if they're very badly written, very hard to read. We don't necessarily reject on those grounds. We have to look at the, the, the data. If the data is promising, even if it's badly written, we'll suggest that the, um, the people perhaps get somebody with an English as a, a mother tongue to, to look at it. We look at the data. Now, if the data doesn't ha isn't robust, so there are no error bars on it, there's no indication of good, um, robust statistics, it's a very unclear method. It's not novel. It's not new. Um, it repeats something we already know and then doesn't do it very well. We will reject those uh, articles. Um, but very often the, we have a scientific editorial board. So if there's anything very useful in it, the article has potential, we'll send it back with recommendations of what they should do to have a good article. So we're very encouraging to actually try and help people get back a good article to us. Perhaps um, the more, uh, the journals that don't have scientific editors, so they don't have scientists as editors, will tend to reject out of hand if it doesn't read nicely and it looks a little bit you know unprofessional or something like that but we look for the for the good science among it and that's basically what it boils down to if it's good science it'll get in even if it's badly written